Hey Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So today I'm going to talk about 2000X. Now it was called 2000X because it came out in 2002 and 2003. So some guy in heman.org just coined it 2000X. Now these were some of my favorites. I mean look how cool this Prince Adam looks. And he would raise his sword up in the air and he would say, by the power of Grayskull. And then all of a sudden lightning would come down and then, you know, He-Man would come out. And he would say, I have the power. Actually, you want to hear that from the one of the figures? Look at this. They even had power figures. I have the power. Oh, that was so cool. And so we had, like, you know, this cool battle cat and this great looking uh, features and things we'd never seen before. I mean, like, look how cool the Skeletor looked. I mean, we had a splitting sword on him and, you know, the skull face, and they all had some kind of a. Uh, um, button you could press to control the action you know and it was just so cool and man at arms had all this cool detailing on him well the bad part was about these figures is they had very little articulation no knee joints no ankle joints uh the waist did bend and uh no elbow some guys had elbows for certain particular reasons to to go with their action features and we even had some figures that were actually just downright statues which you had to articulate on your own like this was a statue that i took and took them apart so I could make them so you could articulate a little bit but uh so anyway basically that was kind of the 2000x error of all this coolness that we saw I mean look a giant beast man for the first time I mean that was pretty cool I mean and again he also has an action feature too where he could literally beat who you know anybody as he's stomping on them and smashing them you know and then we had uh let's see we had triclops and triclops was pretty cool too in that his eyes would light up basically by using the light above his head that basically make his eyes look like they're actually lighting up because this clear spot right here let's go and grab a light right here and kind of show you so i don't knock any figures over but you can kind of see how his eye is lighting up Boop. And it was kind of a fun feature is not only did his eye light up with the one color like that, but as you rotated it around, you had different colors you could use too and would light up basically from the glass in his head. And he too had an action feature. He'd stick his sword in his hand and he'd push his button and he would kind of twirl his sword a little bit. So I can get this to work. Oh, don't break on me. So there we go. And sure enough, you just push the button in the back and... <laughs> you know, he can do his action feature as, as well. So it was all really cool, fun stuff. But again, lack of articulation. But other than that, they were really fun. So let me go ahead and move some of these out of the way by He-Man. And of course, his missiles launched on his cat too. Oh, such cool stuff. And we had Skeletor, Skeletor, and look at all the detailing they came up with the Four Horsemen. That was so cool. New storylines. First time we've seen the Doom Seeker, which, which uh, Triclops could see through. And then we had this really cool trap jaw with this massive robotic arm. And it's like it's something right out of Terminator or something. Oh, and it's spring loitered even in his face. I mean, that was some pretty cool stuff. And then for the first time we had a Zodak that was just not Caucasian and had this, you know, cool lore behind him and a helmet that would come off and, you know, had this cool staff and of course a gun that was way too big so I ended up not giving it to him. And then we had our many faces, orange like we remember and multiple heads and, you know, and for the first time his head would turn too. So it was just like all this cool stuff. They even made Snake Man, and we had uh, this guy here, uh, Cyclone, the whole new design. And he just, you know, has the same action feature spinning thing, and this could pop down and go over the top and give him even more of a, I don't know, but just some cool stuff. And we got figures like Fisto without the sword, though. And uh, he had an action feature, too, when they called him Battle Fist. 
and he could literally pop his fist and punch. So that was his action feature. And he was big and massive. Now, because these guys have to fit inside the box, as we saw with Beast Man, they a lot of times bend their knees. So I actually took a lot of hot water and straightened this guy's legs out one time and actually made him stand taller and it was really cool. Now because they made figures like this, they wanted to reuse those sculpts. So they gave us things like Ice Armor He-Man, which is one of my favorite um, He-Man variants too. You can just see how cool this Ice Armor He-Man is. And he did not come with an axe, but he has a spot for those axe in the back if you happen to have the other He-Man figures. And he had a feature too where you'd wind him up and he'd have a disc and you'd push the button and the disc would go flying. And then we have Ram Man. And he had, of course, his button in the back where he could knock things over. So let's see how this works in action. Action, action, action. All right, Stink Man, take this. Oop, there's the button. <laughs> wow, he hit, he fell down hard. Uh, and then we had cool things like this. You would take your Skeletor. Let's see if I can find him where I stuck him now. There he is. Skeletor, come on back. And you would strap him in here, and he'd ride this big giant raptor beast. Of course, you have to have them buckle up because, you know, buckle up for safety. And it's supposed to be like a samurai type thing. So they released some samurai figures too in the line. And you know, oh, I won't strap them in too much, too much effort right now. And he had these claws that can come off for his uh, weapons and stuff. And then inside his mouth, you could add a missile that will like fire blasting out. And you just pull the, the lever here. And then, well, this lever's for his hands. <laughs> and he could bounce and just some crazy stuff. This is the missile button right here to launch the fire out of his mouth. When he would shoot the fire out as a missile. So, lots of cool, cool, coolness. And, and we got some other statues, like this one right here, which, of course, I've articulated by using a magnet on the inside of her. So she can move a little bit. Oh, and look at the cool design of this, though. Oh, that is just so spectacular. Anyway, let me put her aside too. Then we had like Evil Lynn, and she had a whole new costume change. And you could see just the way they put like a skull in her in her uh, chest and a cool skirt that came down and cool knee pads. They gave her a, a knife and and uh, just made her look really cool. And then we had Merman, who for once in his life he had a trident, and so he had an extra weapon now that he could actually. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. Oh, it goes in the other hand. Oop. There we go. And he had an elbow that was bent because he would use it for his action feature as he would stab his trident to attack people. And then we had this guy. Yes, Stratos. Not one of my favorites, but he had this cool flying action, which means he couldn't hold any weapons, but he also had bending elbows. And his jetpack had controls, which was actually a really cool feature, having the controls on his jetpack. So there we go. So when we got classics, oh, of course, Tila with her cool long ponytail and new weapons. When the classics came out, you know, they were a lot of fun. Uh, and they were based off of the old 80s figures. So you can see right here is one of my classic He-Mans. And... Uh, the first one that came out, of course, was King Grayskull, and he was based on the new cartoon, but he was, you know, a lot bigger in size. I mean, you can see the comparison size. Grab He-Man out of here. Ugh, get off your cat, He-Man. And you can see the size difference, so really they were not compatible together. Now, if you only had King Grayskull, it would kind of work because he's supposed to be a big guy anyway. So I actually did use King Grayskull for a while with my 2000X figures. And uh, that was kind of a cool thing to do. So, so one of the first customs that people would make is they would take King Grayskull 
and they would put He-Man's head on him. Now they would use this He-Man's head right here, just plop it on there, and that would make a 2000X He-Man. Now later on, we did get a 2000X head, which you can see I've used right here. And this is the original King Grayskull body. And I just threw some 2000X weapons from the toys, the ones you just saw a minute ago, and then put the head from the, um, from the snake armor He-Man that we got with classics. So this was like one of the first ones you'd make. Now a lot of people, they, would, they wouldn't use this really cool King Grey Skull that came in the box with the lightning and stuff. They would actually use the King Grey Skull that had the red cape. Let me show you. Where is that He-Man? There he is. There we go. And of course they would take and use, just throw this head on there right here. And a lot of times they'd use Prince Adam's head because it was closer to color match. And that'd be it. And so this would usually be your first person's 2000X custom. This sword came with man at arms. And there you go. That'd be your first custom. Now my first 2000X custom, believe it or not, was not He-Man. But it was Stratos. Yes. I know. After all the grief I give Stratos, it's hard to believe that he was my first 2000X custom. And what makes him 2000X was I added the jetpack piece to him. Um, I made it so his head could go up higher so he can look up when he's flying. And I gave him the hands so he could hang on to stuff. His original hands, neither hand could hold stuff. And so I actually took the hands from the 2000X Stratos and put them on there. So that was my first 2000X custom so he could actually battle. And then I gave this to him from the Blue Devil DC line so he could have that so it looks like the thing you see in the cartoon there you go huh. so that was my first 2000x custom figure i know it's not super 2000x he still has the wings but i like these wings better than the mechanical ones more organic looking it looks way cooler in my opinion all right so let's continue on down this 2000x line Let's see who should I grab next? Evil Lynn. Dun, dun, dun. So here's my 2000X Evil Lynn. And I gave her the skull in the middle, as you can see. Now they did make a battleground Evil Lynn, which I've used that for the base for this. And uh, But then I gave her the skirt from the 2000X figure. I added the knife on the side of her leg. Kind of a fun little thing. It took two Evil Lins to create the two knee pads because the original Evil Lynn. The knee pads are not the same size. So you check this out. They actually gave her a long one on this side and a short one on this side because it has the pocket boot. And the pocket boot was larger to, to hold the computer chip that was inside here for the castle for Tila. So because of that, you had a long one that went all the way down to the ankle and a short one that stopped at the um, cut of the top of the boot where the actual um, pockets were around the boot. So because of that, I actually had to use two evil lens to create the the cool um, knee pad look and the front and leg look, because I had to use two long ones. You can also use two short ones, which I have done and sold those figures before. And then of course I just used one of Beast Man's um, wristbands for her choker. So there you go. And then I also added this to give it some more aesthetic look. You can see it. She has that on her as well. It looks, it looks, looks way cooler. So it just kind of gave her a little bit more 2000X look. We saw Battleground, B Battleground Evil Inn. And then, of course, you can toss her cape on if you choose to. So there she is. And I also, well, this is not the one I think I customized, but I also made a customized one of these for, but this is not the one. All right. So there's Evil Inn. I've also made a... Um, King Randor, 2000X-ish. I created the shield in Shape Boys and printed it out. And then I uh, took a... Uh, um, um, oh, whose body was it? Oh, well. Anyway, it's, it was a, a new adventurous figure. And he's the guy that came with the helmet, but I can't think of his name right now. Put King Randor's armor on, painted this gold, and then uh, gave him some gave him Bo's boots. So there you go. I think it looks way cool. So he's very 2000X-ish looking. My battle armor, King, uh, King Randor, or yeah. 
There we go. So then I went on to make other custom He-Man figures. So I made this one right here. So he is the jungle attack He-Man. And I gave him all the jungle attack stuff. Stuck it on there. Swapped out the boots. So that was kind of a fun throwback to that. Then I wanted to make some ice armor He-Mans. So this one right here I made was using Zodak parts. So I used Zodak shorts and I used, I believe, King Grayskull's body for this. And then of course the head, of course, is from the um, Snake Armor He-Man. And then this battle axe is actually 3D printed. I actually made it in clear resin. Oh, is the paint sticking? No. I always hate that when you paint stuff and the, the paint just sticks and ruins it. Yeah, see, look, I got some paint wore off there. But you can kind of see how it's kind of translucent blue or translucent and then uh, did some extra painting on it to give it kind of that ice look for his ice armored battle axe. And of course, you know, I wanted to make another one too. So this one's actually more based on the figure where he's got the same loincloth, same hands, the same wrist pieces. But I still gave him these boots because they're more articulated than the ones that come with the, that, the actual um, one that came with 2000X. And for the axe, I just painted it. It's just a regular silver axe that I painted. There's no see-throughness on it at all. Just to kind of give it that cool iced look. All right. I did try to make my own 2000X Prince Adam. I gave him a oversized sword from a, from a, a China knockoff. So it looks more like his sword that he had before he, before it broke and opened up and turned into the power sword that we see. And I know he's not little, he's full size, but you know, it's still kind of cool to have a Prince Adam is 2000 X styled. And I gave him the gun on the side and of course the band. And this, this vest is actually from um, original eighties. So that's pretty fun, pretty cool. And of course he's got the weak ankles like we saw with a lot of the Prince Adam figures. I have not fixed them yet, just lay him down. And then of course I have made this. This is a really easy custom. You get the snake armor um, man at arms. I washed off all the gold paint on the armor and then I swapped the head out. I actually swapped the, the helmet out too. This is actually the snake armor helmet. You can see because it matches. So really I, I pried the head off from the helmet and put it on there. And then the gun piece, I actually sanded it out so it fit over his hand while he's still wearing his armor. It was kind of stinky when they actually released this originally in, in the weapons pack. Um, you got it, and it was really cool, but you had to pull off his armor piece to put it on. So just a little bit of sanding in there made it fit. So now he can actually have it when he's um, ready to battle. And the reason why it's my 2000X one is because it has all the armor detailing, or all the mechanic detailing on it, which was a snake armor version of him. So there you go. Another one that I made... Uh, I used the 2000X head from the, the pack that we got. Now, originally I made my own head from a, a, a custom figure that I painted, but then I went back and just swapped the head out with the 2000X head pack we got. And then I add these jump jets and these giant boots, and now I got myself a cool Roboto. There we go, and he is ready for 2000X action. <laughs> So that's my 2000X Roboto. Just basically put some parts on him. Um, normally Roboto's armor was had armoring on him to protect him. So that's why I threw this armor on, on top of him. As opposed to his, his clear chest being shown. But you can still see he has the clear down below. And I actually used Psychop's um, chest pieces and back pieces. Because the original one shattered. And so it's actually blue underneath there, not clear. All right. 2000X Whiplash. My custom on that. You can see I just took the head and painted it to match the body. Chopped these off and then painted those. And then gave the 2000X weapon from the toy. Used the heat shrink clear tubing so it fits in his hand. And a really easy custom to make. You just got to get the right figures and put it together. And there you got your 2000X Whiplash. Very cool. 
And let's see here. My 2000X Beast Man, one of my versions of him. He's, uh, you can see he's modeled after, this is the 2000X Beast Man toy originally we got from the series. And you can see he's kind of modeled after him with, with a coloring scheme. Not exact, but close. And I gave him the big giant hands and the wristbands and the knee pads. And then I uh, 3D printed these pieces here. And this is just heat shrink tubing I used in the front to make that. And then, of course, just painted those up. So there you go. But I was not happy with this Beast Man, as many of you guys saw. So I have made a new 2000X Beast Man. Bum, bum, bum. Giant Beast Man. And this one I made from a Bigfoot figure. And I, since you guys last saw it, I did swap his feet out and gave him some nice, big, beefy feet instead of those small little feet he had. So now he's just more awesome. He's a lot more sturdier now. He's going to fall quite as easy. I also moved his hands out a little bit. And on the cuffs where I ripped it, I actually put it on the bottom so it's not as noticeable. So that when he's fighting and doing stuff, you don't see that cuff exposed. So there is my 2000X Beast Man. And he is awesome. He's got the big old club and... Oh, big beefy. All right. So, what I have not hit yet is my 2000X Skeletor. So, my first 2000X Skeletor, actually, I've made a few of them now. I'll put him aside. Oh, you, someone asked me to show a comparison between the two. There you go. There is the 2000X Beast Man we got in 2002. And here is my new one that I made for the classics. So, you can see a comparison of them how they look side by side. Ta -da. Okay, I'll put them away now. And I've done that comparison. I just had it sitting out so I wouldn't forget. Oh, dominoes. So here is one of my uh, 2000X Skeletors that I made. And you can see he has the, the bare feet, just like 2000X did. I gave him the, the Havoc Staff from 2000X and the sword. And then, of course, this cool, really cool custom head. So you can take his helmet off to kind of give that 2000X skull look that we saw in the cartoon where it just has his skull just floating. And then I used um, all the armor and the body is actually from Keldor, not from Skeletor. That way it has the darker purple. I painted the hood to match the color, and that way the cape matches too. And um, it gives him... Just more of a 2000X look, having the wrist cuffs on there and stuff. But that is not my Kudara. My cool 2000X Skeletor is this one. It's funny, that's just a little too loose on those ankles. Is this one right here. Now this one right here is my really cool 2000X Skeletor. What makes them so cool you probably already know those that watch my videos all the time is his eyes actually um, kind of light up a little bit from behind so you can kind of see he has a glowing kind of eyes Boop. just basically a light from behind is all you need to shine through there and you can kind of see the back of his head right under his hood where I got the spot where the light is to shine through I gave him a, a cape from uh, Darth Vader his 2000X armor and loincloth is from the original 2000X figure and then I gave him the swords the Havoc staff and then I painted these purple to match and then gave him the bare feet he's actually made from the Filmation Super 7 figure and I have a whole bunch of videos on how I made him Then I added a little piece of balloon right there for his neck to cover with the blue and he is way cool awesome and the cape is just massive you can roll it around because it's like I said it's a uh, it is uh, Darth Vader's cape, so it has quite the, the foliage in it, if you will. All right. So, what I decided to do was remake that dinosaur so that Skeletor can actually ride that dino in the battle. So I can take my 2000X Skeletor and place him on the Raptor. Ugh. And this is Raptor's kind of fun. Basically, uh, 
he has a button down here which makes his eyes light up and makes all kinds of noise you can see the eye or not and then he has another button here let's see oh that's right you wag the tail as you wag the tail it wags the body and you can control like a puppet and then I added these uh, claws on there from a 2000 X1 so it's kind of a fun and it's actually from um, Jurassic World and then the this right here is actually just from one of the horses that I took and painted purple and black so it matches the, the color scheme and then this is one of those little kids bracelets that they wear on the wrist and I just uh, cut it to the right size re-glued it and then painted all the spikes silver that's kind of a fun touch my wife thinks it looks ridiculous but I actually kind of like having the spike collar on there this gives it a little bit more of a scarier kind of look there we go ha! I mean look how cool that looks Skeletor going into battle on his Raptor all right so one figure left to show and that is my 2000X He-Man my final one that I made which uh, is my pride and joy right here oh. He-Man and Battle Cat 2000X and you can see this is the first time I ever made the wrist cuffs to go on from the 2000X figure which I was so cool and happy with I've done it a lot since then but this was the first one that I did it on so this was like for me this is so cool I gave him the darker boots from uh, Spike Or so I stole Spike Or's boots and put them on him and then the loincloth that I used Ular's loincloth underneath and then just put this over the top of it and I even have an extra armor in case I want to go with the cross or the asterisk so I can swap it out so this was my cool 2000X He-Man which was kind of the reason why I kind of wanted to do this was to get the 2000X He-Man right off the bat and then I added these on there and basically I 3D printed this little piece and then cut off the bottom of the gun and then it just mounts right on there like that then I can load the missiles in it and he can then shoot oops ah. or your mask then he can then shoot the enemy with his missiles so cool all right so now you have seen all my 2000x custom figures now they did make a lot more 2000x figures for the classics line I figured I wouldn't show them all in this video just my customs but they have some really cool figures still to make I mean I want to see someone make this figure again in classics shouldn't be too hard to do so you customizers out there make something like this make the, the fire lord Skeletor let me see how it looks that'd be a fun one to make and uh, I don't know if you guys remember all the cool different they had so many different uh, variations you could buy all right well that's about all I got there are some extra heads here I didn't show here's evil Lynn's helmet that I made for her so she can hold it in her hand when she's helmetless and then of course the 2000x man-at-arms head to stick on there if you want to instead which came with the um, battle ram and then of course you have the regular evil in head as well all right I know that was a long video and I tried some new video software to record this let me know what you think of it if it came out good or not and uh, I know the lighting kept changing a lot that was kind of annoying but let me know your thoughts on it like subscribe tell your friends and uh, let's get this channel booming you guys thanks again for tuning in bye now